Lawrence Mejia of the Pugilist Place. We're here with Hector Lopez. Hector, we're, we're here at Alexis's Media Day. So Hector, my first question is, uh, Alexis has rebounded beautifully since his loss to Rashidi Ellis. Um, talk to me about his trip back, how he, um, how he got his groove back after that loss. Great question. Most guys don't know how to lose. Lex has never lost a beat. I think, in hindsight, nobody wants to lose. Nobody plans on losing. You don't go out, there, especially in the boxing. He took a couple weeks off. Um, as a matter of fact, I had sent him to go spar Josh Taylor in the UK. Came back and he said, give me a fight, I'm ready. So it never really did anything. I think if anything, it probably drove him uh, to say, I don't ever want to have this feel. He told me something after the fight. I don't ever want to feel like this. And I said, well, you're the only one that can control it. And uh, he, he rebounded very quickly, much better than Ronnie did when Ronnie left. A day and night with those two. Ronnie was in hiding for three months. And this kid, two weeks, he's back to normal. Ready to get after it again. I think so, yeah. And, and a big learning experience. You've been with Alexis since he was a little kid, and his power is well documented. Explain to us just how powerful he is. He's probably one of the strongest fighters. I've been doing this with amateur fighters for 28 years. His, I don't think he even knows how to handle his power. It's, it's very freaky at times. He's a lot stronger than even his uh, record indicates. Um, and I think it's because he was so big and he lost so much weight. Alexis was uh, 12, 13 years old, and he probably weighed 225. So he, he literally just came in to lose weight. He wasn't planning. He, his brothers were boxing and stuff, but uh, he came in and lost all that weight, and he never lost that power, which is kind of the craziest thing. But uh, I, I call it baby fat power because I, I still, to this date, I mean, he, I just think he was such a big kid that he was able, for some reason, lose all that, shed that weight, but he, he kept his strength, which is kind of a crazy thing. It's an amazing story, and also how he just had that hidden talent. He was knocking guys out, like, immediately, right? It's funny, the first time I put him in a spar, it was here. Uh, we had a couple other guys, and I said, Alex, I need you to spar. He was like, no, I, I don't want to spar. I said, just get in there, just spar. I'm like, no, Hector, I said, I actually got mad. Get your shit on and get in there. He goes in there, and he drops my guy. An amateur fighter had a bunch of fights, and he dropped them in the first round. Wow, that's incredible. And I said, yeah, we got something here. So little by little, we started polishing. One of his first few amateur fights, he started dropping people. You don't see that in amateur uh, uh, boxing. And I said, you know, I mean, he, he already fought national terms at the time he was only his fifth bout. That's unheard of. Wow. Winning big national terms, and it was just his power. He was such a strong kid. And so here we are, years down the road, his media day for his upcoming fight with Blair Cobbs. What are your thoughts about Blair Cobbs from a trainer's perspective? I'll be honest, um, I, I asked myself if there's anything I should be concerned with Blair. Nothing really sticks out. I think we fought much tougher guys than Blair. I think Blair's done a good job, you know, parading around, hollering and doing all that and putting himself in this position for a fight. Um, I'm not really concerned about too much. I will give Blair, he's a good athlete, he's got unbelievable heart, he's been dropped many times, he gets up and wins. I'm not going to put him up there with, you know, okay, we've been in the ring with uh, Manny Pacquiao, Josh Taylor, uh, Giovanni Santiago. These are all unbelievable southpaws. Some of them world champions. Uh, we were we started camp with Regis Progress. I'm not going to put him up there. That's not a shot at him. That's not a jab. That's a fact, okay? So I'm not going to go in there and overthink it. I'm going to let Lexus be a Lexus, and I think we're the younger guy, the more polished guy, and the stronger guy. And March 19th, you should see that. Right, and as you mentioned, he's been in there with a who's who of world-class fighters. Everybody, from Mikey Garcia to Terrence Crawford. I mean, you name it, and we've sparred with those guys. He was just there at RGBA yesterday, right, in Riverside? We were there yesterday, yes. We were wow. finishing up our last day of sparring. So, you're a very cerebral guy, very intelligent. Are you looking forward to matching wits with Freddie Roach? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not. I don't want to lose to anybody. I don't care if it's Freddie Roach or Joe Smith. I don't want to lose. Freddie and I are good friends. But at the end of the day, I don't want to lose to anybody. Absolutely, 100%. So uh, March 19th, how do you see this fight playing out? In my mind, I've, I've obviously, I've seen this fight already. I, I think Alexis um, will stop and knock out Blair Cops. That's him. I'm not gonna go and sit there and tell you all this. He's there to be hit, and we're gonna hit him, and we're gonna take it right to him, we're gonna knock him out. Well, we'll, we'll definitely tune in to see if that comes true. Thank you, Hector, we Anytime. appreciate the time. Thank you.